Welcome to our $5 million studio. Today I'm gonna give you a full tour of our office space as well as walk you through how we make videos. It's all thanks to our friends and sponsors over at monday.com. Hello my friends and welcome to our office. So the last time we did a tour, everything was entirely under construction. And while construction is still going on, it is a lot better than it was last time. We're doing a bunch of stuff today. Very kindly, Monday.com have sponsored this video. We're gonna talk a lot more about them in a little bit. But first, why don't I give you a little tour of the studio? So we started the process of looking for this building in 2021. It took us pretty much a full year to actually find the right building, get the keys to it, go through that whole process. Like that was an entire year of my life. And then the year after was getting it built. And so we've pretty much been nonstop working on it. And there's actually like literally like new rooms over here um, since we started. So actually, let me uh, let me take around uh, a look around here. Once we got the process started, once we started really looking for a much bigger spot, like we, what we ended up finding, uh, it, it was worth it. It just was not an easy process going from a couple of small little loft units to an entire ass building. So if you come into here, this is all new compared to last time. So this area used to just be storage. Now it's the edit den where all the editors work. And as you can see, there's a lot of construction equipment around um, because we're currently in the middle of putting AC in half the building. So if you ask me what it feels like to spend a Lamborghini on air conditioning, I can tell you, not good. Woo! kind of hot in here. What a great time to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, monday.com. So we were putting together this behind the scenes video. It felt like the perfect opportunity to try out using monday.com because let's be real, we can use help with none of the AC, but also with our workflow. Being a creator is heavily dependent on data, whether it's all the projects and the various pre-production steps to get to making a video, or the analytics after the fact when a video goes live to understand it. And the nice thing about monday.com is that it puts everything together in neat little graphs that even I can understand. It also boosts collaboration. I can't tell you how often I'm walking around the office to see if a project has been done or not, whereas with monday.com it makes it incredibly simple to track tasks from start to completion. But more about monday.com a little later on. This, my friends, is the conference room. So, it's a little bit messy right now actually, but that's fine. Um, so this is where we do some meetings. Um, sometimes we have like sponsors and people come in here and we'll, we'll have chats. Um, this is where we usually do like catch ups on Mondays. Uh, we also use this as a screening room. Look. I didn't want to clean anything up for this video. I want to give you, this is the authentic cable management that we live with every day. This is also when we played beer pong. So when we first got this office, it was uh, built in like the late 80s, early 90s, and it was all original. It was so just grungy and carpet. It just had never been taken care of. And for me, it was like, oh, you know, it's a standalone building. We have to worry about like the sound and all this kind of stuff. And it's very big. It's way bigger than what we need right now, but it's big enough for us to grow into. Because that was really the number one thing. I did not want to take a leap forward and then feel like we're crammed in a couple years later. All right, let's go say hello to the edit team. A few months ago, we finished building this out, putting the AC in, and now it's super nice. Hello, gang. Hello. So this is where the editors work. As you can see, it's a lot bigger than we need right now. So there's a couch and a TV and a bunch of stuff. It's definitely like, this is like the most cozy vibe in the office. And then, I don't know, Greg, Ken's around. I'm just gonna just take you into Ken's office because that's fine. Can you tell that this is Ken's office? He'll be super happy with you that you didn't let him clean up. Yeah, here's the thing. He knew that I was doing the studio tour because I told him like 20 minutes ago. So this is all on him. Look, he has like clothes in here. He has bags. He has stuff that he hasn't put back since, you know, yeah, months ago. Yeah, he does ago. have plenty of bags. You know, more of the bags than I think that are necessary, but I'm showing you the real overclock. I'm not showing you the, the, the clean, perfect angle. I'm going to show you all the nonsense that's here. So this is our break room. Um, if you've noticed, it doesn't look quite right. Uh, look up in the ceiling. Look at all the stuff up here. These are all the AC units that are not working right now, but I think will be up and running next week. AC is great. I love the fact that it got hot and all of our AC units stopped working and we had to do all new AC literally in the entire building. All right, what can I roast in Matt's office? So here's the thing, Matt, actually designs his office nicely. Look, he's got like his little Lego mug. He's got his R2-D2. Um, I vaguely remember him not wanting us to go in his office because he wanted to clean it up. 
Oh, really? He wants to come in his office? No. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. So, uh, this is Matt's office. He doesn't want me to show it to you. Um, there's also a lot of plushes in here. So this little spot is where we do also meetings. So this is usually when we're like pitching stuff. So everyone will kind of like jump on the couch and we'll just kick around ideas for like, oh, I saw something weird on Timu or whatever the case is. Now, my office has um, evolved a lot and uh, is still uh, not done, but let me show you some of the cool stuff. My neat chair. So I really need to get something done. I sit in this chair, it's not comfortable, but I will put my headphones in, lock in like some emails or writing some ideas up or whatever. Like this is my Austin needs to make this happen right now chair. Um, coming over here, it's uh, this is about as clean as my office ever is. So this is my desk. Uh, my desk setup is actually pretty straightforward. I run everything on my MacBook. So I plug it in via this Thunderbolt dock to my, at this point, eight year old LG Ultrafine, which is almost dead, but I'm still using it because I'm stubborn. Um, I also have my little camera set up here. So I have my Neumann mic going into a Focusrite Scarlett. I also have an a7 III and a 20 mm lens. So I can record like TikToks and whatnot with this, as well as I can actually record like proper videos if I just want to like hop in and record. So if you're not familiar, I have a lot of Pokemon cards. So I have tons and tons of graded slabs at home, but they just sit in boxes all the time. So like usually like once a month, I will take all these cards and swap them out and I will just bring new ones in. So this is my, my Watsi era. This is an actual SOC from the Xbox Series X. So when we went up uh, in early 2020 and we did the video, uh, as a little souvenir, they gave us an actual chip from the Xbox Series X like six months before the console came out. This has definitely been like the best spot that I've ever had to work. For now, let's take a look upstairs to see the real fun part, the studios. So this is Gear Cage. This is where we keep a lot of our various bits and bobs of GoPros, lenses, it's not a lot, because honestly, we don't have an enormous amount of actual stuff that lives out here. Most of our actual cameras and lenses and that kind of stuff, most of those things are actually permanently living in studios. Various bits and bobs for rigging that I don't know how to use, but Joanna makes it seem very easy. Um, this is our dumping station. So we have a uh, iMac Pro here, which has 10 gig ethernet. So whenever we finish a shoot, we have all our card readers and stuff so we can plug in and dump the footage. Wait. Did you hear that? Is Ken shooting right now? Are you guys filming? So this is where the Danky crew shoot all our videos. Ken, you want to come and say hi? Yes. Hey. Hi. This is the Danky set. It's actually probably the simplest set in this whole entire building, but uh, we're proud of it here. We had to pause because we can hear you from the other side of this wall, but uh, that's okay. Um, Are you saying I interrupted your shoot? Yes, you're very loud. As what? The audience? Me? Yeah. I've never heard of that before. All right, make your video. I'll be loud elsewhere. Bye, Austin. Bye. Um, this, my friends, is storage. And we got a lot of cool stuff over here. Joanna does a great job of keeping a lot of this stuff organized. But basically, if you look through here, there's a mixture of this is a, the Xbox shelf. And you can see we have a lot of Xboxes. Now, this might seem impressive, but keep in mind, Half of these came from GameStop and DK Oldies. So don't put too much stock in how many of these things actually work. The thing is, this stuff is really useful for us when we're doing videos because if we're doing a comparison, if we're, you know, we need an Xbox game, we've got, you know, absolute bins full of games. We've got 360s, we've got uh, One S's, One X's. This is the PlayStation shelf. So we've got the generations of PS5. So when the next version of the PS5 comes out and I say that it's worse, I can at least compare it with the older ones that were better. Here is from when we built the ultimate PSP. So we've got all kinds of just random docs and stuff. It was funny, I feel like a huge chunk of what we do in videos is just trying to track down weird, cool tech, uh, stuff that's, you know, boxed or original from like 10, 20, 30 years ago. So we have a lot of accessories and we really hold on to them because we're constantly using them for building the ultimates or, uh, wish videos or whatever the case is. Um, something slightly cooler is we've got the PSTV, um, which we pull out, most of them are doing like period correct videos like the PS3 and whatnot, but this is the PS3 TV. I mean, technically it's just HDMI, but it actually supports um, 3D, which is really neat. Uh, we've got bins of devices. So we've got an entire two bins of phones and these bins are heavy, so I'm not gonna bring it all the way down, but um, as you can see, we've got them expertly organized. We've got ourselves LG, Huawei, Moto, all kinds of stuff in here. Um, then here are bins of laptops. And the, so one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven bins of laptops. So this might seem like a lot of stuff, but we actually end up donating a lot. So what you won't see here are a lot of like mystery tech items and some more generic things. Like these are the things that are actually like properly useful on like a regular basis. A lot of the other stuff, we just simply donate. In fact, actually, if we come over here. None of this is released, this whole show. Oh, I can't show any of this stuff? Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, just blur this whole shelf. Anyway, am I being too loud still? Yes. Okay, fine, show me your shelf then. What do you got over here? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Really? Just, you just hold it like that. Just, just chilling on the shelf. Because the room's under construction. No, there's a reason why people have unsubscribed from Denki. People are subscribing to Denki every single day. We're positive. So uh, basically, most of the PCs we build get torn down. So out of all the PCs that we actually do build, we usually only keep a few of them here on this bottom shelf that are still you know, put together. And even these usually only stick around for a few months. You know, when we know that we're going to need it for a video. You can tell he's never handled any of these products in his life. You know, I'm, here's the thing, my role here is ceremonial. Uh, I'm just here as a figurehead to, to lead the group, and, and um, uh, I pretend that I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, lots of PC components here. We've got ourselves tons of RAM. Um, we've got ourselves stacks of CPUs. So again, when we're done with the build, pretty much all systems get torn down and put into inventory here. It looks so empty. Everyone just keeps rotating around. The bag looks, see, look, look, if I go fast it's enough. It's your video. If I go fast enough, you can't hide. Welcome to the This Is Studio. So this is the first proper, actual, like fully built setup that stays permanent. So the whole, this whole setup is meant to be uh, swing around. So we can either shoot this way or uh, up against this wall. And it only takes about two, three minutes to actually set it up. So all the cameras are FX3s, um, with the exception of we have one, the only FX7 in the entire company that we still use, which is this well, guy. more, because I just ordered a FX30. What? For this. You ordered an FX30? Yeah. So you can stop using this. See, this is, what, this, this is how you get Austin to buy stuff, is you just do it, and then you blindside him with it, and then he'll talk himself into having purchased it. Let's move on to the other studio. All right, next up we have Studio B, which is where the main channel shoots. This probably looks a lot more familiar. So this is the studio that I spend the majority of my time in. Also, if you hear stuff, there are electricians on the roof installing AC units. So basically the setup in here is relatively straightforward. Um, so we do a mix. So for mystery tech, we typically use the three camera setup. For other types of videos, we typically use this setup, which is just the handheld A7. So this is what it looks like when I'm talking to A camera, and this is what it looks like when I'm talking to B cam. Um, and then also, this is what it looks like when I'm talking to C cam. There you go. See, this is the classic shot. But I'll tell you a little secret. This studio is actually only set up for me. So if I come over here, and you look at like something like A cam, right? So if you look at that feed right here, so hello, it's ACAM. You see how um, the headroom is made for me? If, I don't know, I was a little bit taller, like say Marquez height, then uh, you'd have to pan up the camera. But we literally cannot move the camera one inch up. Otherwise, you see all of this. Like it is precisely configured for me, which means that no one taller than like 6'2 is allowed on the set. And if they are, it looks bad. So, uh, short kings only. It's a good setup in here, but let me continue on through some of the less nice parts of the office because from this point on, we're entering Jenktown. Um, so this over here is our little prop closet. This is usually where we just keep sort of stuff that we need like somewhat regular access to, but nothing that's that important. Christmas. Uh, the Christmas stuff also lives in here. And then if we come over here, this my friends is by far the biggest studio in the office. Welcome to Studio A. We haven't built Studio A yet. So this is just storage. Um, yeah, this is a lot of stuff that is really just meant for like building sets and just random furniture and whatnot. For a 2025 studio tour, hopefully this won't be a big empty room. So if you come over to Studio E, this is also not being used right now. This will either be a studio for like a smaller channel, 
Um, so something that doesn't need maybe quite as much space as some of the others, or if we want to use this for you know grabbing B-roll or top downs and whatnot. So thanks to our friends over at Monday.com, we're gonna give you a little sneak peek at how we create a This Is video. So there's a lot of moving pieces. So not only do we have the crew, which consists of Kenzie, who's the producer, we've got Aaron, who's the editor, and of course Matt and I host, but there's a lot more that goes into it than just Austin and Matt yelling at each other on a mic for 30 minutes. Although that does happen sometimes, but most videos are a little bit more complicated. So what I'm excited about for Monday.com in this sort of trial run for us is how we can actually optimize things because there's a lot of things I have to do every day and I have a giant list of to-dos that I rarely get to the bottom of. And with Monday.com, I have a single tool to manage nearly all aspects of my work life. Hello, my friends. Um, where are we at with on a day-to-day -day basis, it is pretty tough because we are, at any given time, working on about 10 to 15 videos somewhere in a pipeline that is either in production, it's in uh, post-production, it's in pre-production with research, and there's just so much that we need to keep track of. We need to keep track of dates on when videos are gonna go live. We need to keep track of when we're actually gonna be shooting these videos, when embargoes are for products. There's a ton of dates to keep track of. So trying to keep like, oh, what are we shooting today that's gonna fit into our schedule is probably the biggest challenge. For us to be able to easily at a glance see exactly where each project is, where each video is, how much this video needs to do, if we need to, oh, this is missing some B-roll, oh, this edit's half done, we need to watch it before we give notes back, or whatever the case is, having the all in one space is tremendously helpful. Where this is especially important is with Kenzie, who has a lot of work to take all of the pre-production ideas and concepts and put that into a form that we can actually shoot a video on. Hi, I'm Kenzie, I'm the producer for This Is. Hello, hello. Hi. All right, how are we looking? So, uh, I just printed out for the This Is Workflow, there's a main uh, board that's actually like the pipeline of the whole thing. So we have like, we mostly look at it in Kanban form where we have like, here's video ideas, pre-production, production, post-production, post live, so that way we can keep track of you know, what videos are being worked on, on my side, on when are we shooting, what videos are in Aaron's wheelhouse for to edit. So for this is, we have a lot of videos where I make slideshows for Matt and Austin to look at while we film. And so I made it such that if I take one of these videos cards from ideas into pre-production, it will then automatically make a card in my own personal board for pre-production, and then I can just move that over when I'm ready to work on it. So That's you basically can use those automation tools to simplify you having to create multiple cards, yes. such as a reminder that, oh, I need to do this yeah. step, or that's really cool. Yeah. We ended up actually making a lot of physical props, and for something like that, there's a lot of like little bits and pieces that go into that, and so what I can do is make these, like make little card tasks for myself, make some items in the workflow, and then I can say these are all, attach them to this, uh, this video card on the other board, and that way, I can then look at them and I can say like, okay, here's where we're at, here's how many of those parts are done, here's how close we are to being able to move that into production so that when Matt comes to me and says, hey, we're gonna shoot some stuff on Thursday, what things are do we have ready? And I can tell him we have this ready and we have this ready and then we can kind of work from there. What you might not realize when you watch this as video is how much like Matt and I roll up and Kenzie's got everything prepped. Usually you've got like slides for us. Sometimes she like writes jokes for us. So like anytime you look, eh, I'm gonna spoil it, Matt's not gonna be happy. Anytime you see us looking down below the camera, we've got a monitor there. And a lot of times we're reading the jokes that Kenzie wrote for us, so. <laughs> I write my own jokes. Yeah, yeah, but Kenzie writes funny ones. We will see you tomorrow when it is time for the actual shoot. And we'll see all the wondrous this is action in Action? Yeah, we can go with that. All right, perfect. This is take one of the Weird Consoles tier list. When we're just talking about something, if we're not like fired up and like arguing, or if there's not like some interesting content, we can do the whole thing in like five minutes, right? So we need to kind of get in sort of the, um, the right headspace and kind of get all amped up about it. That being said, Kenzie's done so much pre-pro on this that it should be pretty easy for us to argue these things. We have all the props that we can kind of lean into. So now that we have finished shooting, it is time to send this down to Aaron to start editing and see how that workflow goes. 
Yeah, hi, I'm Aaron. I'm the editor for This Is. Hello, my friend. Hello. Are you ready to chop a disaster of a video? Oh, I always am. <laughs> Most of them are. From here, do you want to run everybody through kind of like a quick hit on the workflow? Yeah, I pull it into the timeline, get our LUTs on it, get the our sound profile on it so that the audio is good, and then I just start watching through and yeah, cutting everything. Just delete all the stuff that Matt said, because yeah, so it was mostly wrong. Do, there you go, perfect. Yeah. That looks great. I think yeah, that's then, the way this and is. And then I can just, you know, a lot of sound effects, a lot of noises, a lot of fart jokes, a lot of wow. I'll have to send Rio the noise so she can put that in over me saying that. Whenever you guys say something stupid, I just put a, some sort of noise in there. I would say probably 90% of it is that. Usually once I'm done getting rid of all the times so you guys weren't funny, uh, anyway. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, uh, have fun editing the video. Yeah, great. If you're ready to give Monday.com a try, what are you waiting for? Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial by visiting the link in the description. And above all, I really want to thank you for watching this video. We would not have this very cool office space and have been able to grow the team as much as we have without you watching, liking, subscribing, and ringling that dingling button. It does truly mean a lot. Until next time, my friends, I hope that nothing else breaks, but I'm sure it will.